there is the concern that coronavirus might see a large surge or a spike after this. So to talk about this, I want to bring on Dr. Preeti Malani. She's the University of Michigan Chief Health Officer and Professor of Medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases. Dr. Malani, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want to start in on first that top line concern that I was just mentioning. I mean, do you think that we could start to see a spike in cases or another? <clears throat> surge as we see thousands of people closely together protesting. Yeah, so thank you, Kristen, for having me. And you know, I just want to say that public health and social justice are intertwined. And what's been seen in the pandemic is reflected in the protests with the risk of death and hospitalizations during the pandemic being many fold higher in uh, African Americans and other people of color. And you know, we're seeing these protests erupt across the nation after everyone's been home for the last several weeks, several months, trying to get control of, of a pandemic that's changed everything about our life. And you know, regarding the protests, uh, there is concern that this could lead to transmission events. You know, obviously people are very close together. They're not socially distancing. Um, they're protesting, so their mouths are open. Um, some, of our, some are masked, many are not. People are coughing, uh, there's fire, there's tear gas. Um, on the positive side, the, they're outside. The crowds are mostly younger. Uh, folks are moving around. But there was large scale transmission seen during parades uh, during the influenza outbreak of 1918. So I think there is a concern that this could lead to that. And uh, one, of the, one of the issues that also comes to mind is that there have been a number of arrests that have happened, you know, hundreds of people arrested in some cities, and you know, jails are a place where uh, these outbreaks have also uh, begun. So, Do you have a similar concern as well for perhaps police officers that are out there? I mean, we've heard just here in New York City how a pretty large percentage of, of the New York Police Department was actually uh, affected by the virus. Do you think that we could you know, see that happening with police officers as well? A absolutely. Uh, when people are that close to you and, and they're shouting at you, that is a perfect setup for, for transmission. Uh, and as you know, Kristen, a lot of our first, uh, first responders, they, they were infected. They were, they were uh, infected earlier in the pandemic, and certainly many more are probably going to be uh, affected now. So I want to ask you about the hospitals, which, you know, we had been discussing how they were already overwhelmed and, and, you know, overburdened during this virus and during this pandemic. Do you now see it, you know, this adding on and exacerbating that, you know, as, as protesters are brought in that are injured, um, have been beaten up, hit with rubber bullets, tear gas, et cetera. Does this exacerbate that problem? Yeah, abso absolutely. You know, even when, if you didn't have the pandemic, any, any of these protests in and of themselves would, uh, would certainly stress hospital systems because as you know, trauma and exposures and injuries. And you know, our, this, the overall concern for our health system remains. And even in places where the pandemic and coronavirus is relatively contained, the, the gap between being sort of in a, in a place where it, it's controlled, it's not um, completely overwhelmed, and, and becoming completely overwhelmed is a, is a very narrow gap. And some areas have very, very limited hospital beds. They have limited staff. They have limited ICU beds. And one event, and whether it's a protest or it's a picnic or a graduation party, um, church services, whatever the event of gathering can overwhelm, it can cause a spread of coronavirus. But as you note, when you are um, under capacity in some ways because of coronavirus, any other event that can cause mass injuries would be a really big concern for the system. So it seems almost over the last few days that at least, you know, the narrative about what's happening in the world has completely shifted. Um, no one is really talking about coronavirus as much. Everyone is very much laser focused in on the protests. Do you worry that, you know, people will forget that there is a pandemic going on right now, that people will forget that there's still this deadly virus um, out there that they could possibly contract? Yeah, no, that's a, it's a good thought. And part of it is, is people were already starting to uh, break out of their homes. And, you know, the cabin fever that's affected all of us has, has certainly, um, it's been notable with uh, Memorial Day crowds. Obviously, things have changed a lot in the last few days, and uh, the focus is different. Uh, but, they're, but they're related issues, in fact. And 
some of the progress that's been made could go away. Uh, some outbreaks, you know, some one event could really lead to a lot of issues. And, you know, it's just a lot of it to me is is some of the trust in the whole system is, is sort of questioned. And, you know, I think in some ways it's nice to hear something about something other than coronavirus. But, you know, this is such a devastating thing to be hearing about um, that, you know, maybe people are not going to be paying as much attention. And, um, you know, the other events that are happening where people are just they're going to pool parties, they're going to graduation parties. Um, I, I think we unfortunately can't forget about coronavirus and all of this, but it's easy to forget it. So on that end, are states going about reopening the right way? We've seen some positive trends, you know, here in the Northeast, mm. but, you know, unfortunately that does not hold true across the country. Yeah, so, so Kristen, you know, the United States is almost like 50 different countries in terms of reopening. And if you think about Europe and how different the outbreak was in like Spain and Italy versus maybe Denmark, uh, I think the U.S. is a little bit like that, certainly by region. And, you know, you mentioned the Northeast and they were out ahead in terms of cases, uh, but also in terms of response. And the stay at home orders were very strict, particularly in New York City, which seemed unimaginable at the time. But it's it's interesting how we've adjusted. Um, I would say that after months of strict shutdowns, the biggest thing is having a solid plan for reopening. And I was just on the phone earlier with a colleague from Wisconsin who noted that you know, their state, because of the Supreme Court uh, overturning the stay-at-home order, they kind of opened up without a plan. And I think that can be really dangerous um, and also confusing for people. So I think a lot of states, including my state, Michigan, have really put in plans for containment, uh, guidance for businesses, testing capacity, systems to do contact tracing, and making sure we can isolate case patients. Uh, we can take care of anyone who's been exposed and taking extra precautions people that are vulnerable. And that includes individuals in nursing homes. I mentioned the jails with these current arrests, homeless shelters, uh, also certain business places like meatpacking plants. And so those are the places that would really concern me in terms of a second wave. But mm -hmm. we're going to know very soon what's happening because the, the delay is about two to four weeks. And I am seeing um, at least reports that some of the places that opened up early are seeing uh, an increase in, in cases. Right. Well, we'll have to see how the cases may be surge or not going forward. Dr. Preeti Milani from the University of Michigan, Chief Health Officer there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.